In this video, we will explore the top 25 interview questions commonly asked during Amazon manager interviews. Each question is designed to assess your skills, leadership abilities, and cultural fit within Amazon's unique work environment. We will also provide detailed answers and insights to help you prepare effectively. By understanding these questions and responses, you'll enhance your confidence and readiness for your upcoming interview at one of the world's leading companies. 1. How would you describe your leadership style? My leadership style is collaborative and adaptive. I believe in empowering team members by fostering an environment where their ideas are valued. By encouraging open communication, I create a space for everyone to contribute their strengths. I also emphasize the importance of setting clear expectations while being flexible to adapt strategies as needed. This approach not only motivates individuals but also builds trust within the team, leading to greater engagement and productivity. I strive to lead by example, demonstrating integrity and accountability in every action. 2. Tell me about a time when you had to motivate a struggling team member. What was your approach? In a previous role, I encountered a team member who was disengaged and underperforming. I scheduled a one-on-one -on -one meeting to understand their challenges and discovered they were struggling with personal issues impacting their work. I actively listened and provided support, including adjusting their workload temporarily. I also set clear, achievable goals and offered regular feedback to celebrate small victories. By fostering an open environment and providing tailored encouragement, I helped them regain confidence and improve their performance, ultimately benefiting the entire team. 3. How do you prioritize tasks and manage your time effectively in a fast-paced environment? In a fast-paced environment, I prioritize tasks by first identifying urgent versus important activities. I use a combination of tools, such as digital task managers and calendars, to organize my workload visually. Each morning, I review my tasks and set clear, achievable goals for the day. I break larger projects into smaller, manageable steps, allowing for flexibility as priorities shift. Regular check-ins with my team help ensure alignment and facilitate adjustments as needed. This approach helps me maintain focus, manage deadlines, and respond effectively to unexpected challenges. 4. Describe a situation where you had to make a difficult decision with limited information. How did you handle it? In a previous role, I faced a critical situation where we needed to select a vendor for a project, but time was tight, and we had limited data on the candidates. I gathered my team for a brainstorming session, encouraging them to share insights and experiences related to each vendor. We created a pros and cons list, prioritizing key criteria that aligned with our project goals. After thorough discussion, we made a decision based on the collective input and instinct, ensuring everyone felt included in the process. This collaborative approach built trust and accountability within the team. 5. How do you approach setting goals and measuring performance for your team? Setting goals involves a collaborative process where team members contribute their insights and aspirations. I begin by facilitating discussions to align individual objectives with our team's strategic vision. Smart criteria, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-bound, guide the goal-setting process. Performance measurement is continuous. I utilize regular check-ins, feedback sessions, and performance metrics to track progress. Encouraging self-assessment among team members fosters accountability. Celebrating achievements and addressing challenges together cultivates an environment of growth and support, ultimately enhancing team performance. 6. Give an example of a complex problem you solved. What was your process? One complex problem I faced was during a product launch where a critical feature was underperforming. I initiated a cross-functional team meeting to gather insights from engineering, marketing, and customer support. After identifying the root cause, we brainstormed potential solutions. I created a prioritized action plan, assigning tasks based on team members' strengths. We conducted rapid testing and iterated based on feedback. This collaborative approach not only resolved the issue efficiently but also strengthened team dynamics, enhancing our ability to tackle future challenges. 7. How do you handle ambiguity in your work? Handling ambiguity involves embracing uncertainty and remaining adaptable. I approach ambiguous situations by first gathering as much information as possible, consulting with stakeholders and team members. I break down the problem into manageable parts, prioritizing key elements that can lead to clarity. Setting short-term goals helps create focus while allowing flexibility for adjustments. Encouraging open dialogue within the team fosters a collaborative environment where diverse perspectives can emerge, leading to innovative solutions. This proactive mindset ensures progress even when the path is unclear. 8. Describe a time when you had to pivot quickly on a project. How did you manage the change? When our team was deep into developing a new software feature, we received unexpected feedback from key stakeholders that required significant changes. I called an immediate meeting to assess the situation. We prioritized the feedback identified critical changes, and adjusted our timelines. I reassigned tasks based on team members' strengths to ensure efficiency. Open communication was crucial. I kept everyone informed about progress and expectations. 
By focusing on collaboration and flexibility, we successfully delivered the revised feature ahead of schedule, enhancing stakeholder satisfaction and team morale. 9. Tell me about a time when you failed. What did you learn from the experience? In my previous role, I led a project that ultimately did not meet its objectives due to a lack of thorough market research. I had assumed we understood our audience well, but we failed to validate our assumptions adequately. This experience taught me the importance of data-driven decision-making and the need for comprehensive research before launching any initiative. I learned to embrace failure as a learning opportunity, and now I ensure that my team conducts extensive market analysis before progressing with projects. This shift has led to more successful outcomes in subsequent initiatives. 10. How do you approach risk assessment and mitigation in your projects? Risk assessment and mitigation begin with identifying potential risks early in the project lifecycle. I conduct thorough analyses, engaging team members to brainstorm possible challenges. Once risks are identified, I categorize them based on their likelihood and impact. I then develop strategies tailored to each risk, which may include contingency plans, resource allocation, or risk avoidance measures. Regular monitoring during the project allows for adjustments as new risks emerge. By fostering open communication, I ensure that the team remains proactive and equipped to handle unforeseen issues effectively. 11. How do you ensure your team maintains a customer-centric focus? Ensuring a customer-centric focus involves regular communication about customer needs and feedback. I promote an environment where team members are encouraged to share customer insights and experiences, which helps us remain aligned with their expectations. We hold weekly meetings to discuss customer feedback, identify areas for improvement, and celebrate successes. Additionally, I advocate for the inclusion of customer perspectives in our decision-making processes, ensuring that every project we undertake considers how it impacts our clients. Training sessions focused on enhancing customer service skills are also essential. 12. Describe a situation where you went above and beyond for a customer. In one instance, a customer reached out expressing frustration over a delayed shipment that was critical for their business. Recognizing the urgency, I personally contacted our logistics team to expedite the process. I also arranged for a temporary solution by sourcing the product from a local retailer and delivering it directly to the customer's office. I kept the customer informed throughout the process, ensuring they felt valued. This proactive approach not only resolved their issue but also strengthened our relationship, as the customer appreciated the extra effort taken on their behalf. 13. How do you balance customer needs with business objectives? Balancing customer needs with business objectives requires a strategic approach. First, I prioritize understanding customer feedback and pain points through regular communication and surveys. This insight informs our product or service offerings. Next, I ensure alignment between customer expectations and business goals by involving stakeholders in discussions. I advocate for flexible solutions that meet customer demands while considering resource constraints. This dual focus fosters loyalty, drives revenue, and supports sustainable growth, ensuring that both customer satisfaction and business viability are achieved. 14. Tell me about a time when you had to deal with a difficult customer. How did you handle it? When I encountered a difficult customer who was unhappy with our product, I first actively listened to their concerns without interrupting. Acknowledging their feelings was crucial. Next, I asked clarifying questions to fully understand the issue and offered potential solutions tailored to their needs. I ensured that I followed up with them after implementing the solution to confirm their satisfaction. This approach not only resolved the immediate problem but also helped build a stronger relationship with the customer, reinforcing their trust in our brand. 15. How do you gather and utilize customer feedback to improve processes or products? To gather customer feedback, I implement a multi-channel approach, including surveys, interviews, and feedback forms. I encourage direct communication, ensuring customers feel their opinions are valued. Analyzing this feedback helps identify trends and areas for improvement. I prioritize actionable insights and share them with relevant teams, fostering a collaborative environment for innovation. By integrating customer feedback into our processes, we can enhance product features and streamline services, ultimately leading to increased satisfaction and loyalty. Regular follow-ups with customers also ensure they see their input is taken seriously. 16. How do you foster innovation within your team? Innovation can thrive when team members feel safe and supported. I encourage an open environment where everyone can share ideas without fear of criticism. Regular brainstorming sessions allow diverse perspectives to surface, fostering creativity. I also implement a fail-fast culture where experimentation is encouraged and learning from failures is seen as a valuable step toward success. Recognizing and rewarding innovative efforts, regardless of the outcome, reinforces the importance of creativity in our work. This proactive approach motivates team members to think outside the box and contribute to our goals. 17. Describe a time when you implemented a new idea or process that significantly improved efficiency. In my previous role, I noticed that our team was spending excessive time on manual data entry, which led to delays in reporting. 
I proposed implementing an automated data capture system that integrated with our existing tools. After gaining approval, I led the project, collaborating with IT for seamless integration. Once launched, the new system reduced data entry time by 50%, allowing team members to focus on more strategic tasks. This not only improved our efficiency but also enhanced data accuracy, leading to better decision-making across the organization. 18. How do you stay updated on industry trends and technological advancements? Staying updated on industry trends and technological advancements involves a multifaceted approach. I regularly subscribe to relevant industry publications and newsletters, which provide insights into emerging trends and innovations. Attending conferences and webinars also allows me to network with peers while learning from experts. Additionally, I engage in online forums and social media groups focused on my field. By fostering relationships with thought leaders and participating in discussions, I ensure I remain informed and can adapt my strategies to align with the latest developments. 19. Tell me about a time when you challenged the status quo. What was the outcome? Challenging the status quo occurred during a project where our team relied heavily on outdated processes. I proposed a new digital tool that streamlined our workflow, enhancing collaboration and efficiency. Initially, some team members resisted the change due to comfort with existing methods. I organized a demo and shared data illustrating potential time savings. Gradually, I gained buy-in, and we transitioned to the new system. The outcome was a 30% reduction in project turnaround time, fostering a culture of innovation and openness to change within the team. 20. How do you encourage creative thinking among your team members? Encouraging creative thinking involves creating an open environment where team members feel safe to share ideas without judgment. I often hold brainstorming sessions where all contributions are welcomed, regardless of how unconventional they may seem. I also promote collaboration by pairing individuals with different skill sets, which often leads to innovative solutions. Lastly, I provide opportunities for ongoing learning, such as workshops or courses, to inspire new perspectives. Recognizing and rewarding creative efforts helps reinforce the value placed on innovative thinking within the team. 21. How do you build and maintain strong relationships with cross-functional teams? Building and maintaining strong relationships with cross-functional teams involves open communication, mutual respect, and collaboration. I prioritize regular check-ins to ensure alignment on goals and objectives. I actively listen to team members' perspectives and encourage feedback to foster trust. Celebrating successes, both big and small, helps in strengthening bonds. Additionally, I make an effort to understand the unique challenges and strengths of each function, which enables me to facilitate smoother collaboration and synergy across teams. This approach cultivates a positive environment where everyone feels valued and engaged. 22. Describe a situation where you had to resolve a conflict between team members. In a previous project, two team members disagreed on the best approach for a critical task, leading to tension and decreased productivity. I organized a mediation meeting, allowing each person to express their viewpoints. After facilitating a structured discussion, we identified common goals and areas of compromise. I encouraged them to collaborate on a solution that integrated both ideas. This not only resolved their conflict but also fostered a stronger working relationship and enhanced team cohesion, demonstrating the importance of open communication and collaboration. 23. How do you ensure effective communication within your team and with other departments? Effective communication is vital for team success. I establish clear communication channels, such as regular team meetings and updates, to keep everyone informed. I encourage open dialogue, where team members can share ideas, concerns, and feedback without hesitation. Utilizing collaboration tools enhances transparency and allows for real-time discussions. Additionally, I prioritize active listening, ensuring that everyone feels heard and valued. By fostering a culture of respect and collaboration, I help bridge gaps between departments, creating a unified approach toward achieving our goals. 24. Tell me about a time when you had to influence someone without direct authority. How did you approach it? When I needed to influence a colleague from another department on a project, I focused on building rapport. I scheduled a one-on-one -on -one meeting to understand their perspective and concerns. During our discussion, I actively listened and empathized with their challenges, which helped establish trust. I presented my ideas backed by data and aligned them with their goals, showing how collaboration could benefit both departments. This approach fostered a sense of partnership, and by the end of our conversation, they were on board with the proposed changes. 25. How do you create an inclusive environment that values diverse perspectives? Creating an inclusive environment involves actively promoting diversity and ensuring every team member feels valued. I start by fostering open communication where everyone can share their ideas without fear of judgment. Encouraging collaboration among diverse teams allows different viewpoints to emerge. I also prioritize training on cultural competency and unconscious bias, equipping team members with tools to understand and appreciate each other's backgrounds. Regular feedback sessions help identify any barriers to inclusion, allowing for continuous improvement and a stronger, 
more cohesive team dynamic. In preparing for an Amazon manager interview, understanding the key questions and crafting effective answers is crucial. The insights shared in this video aim to equip you with the knowledge to navigate this competitive process successfully. By familiarizing yourself with these top 25 questions, you'll enhance your confidence and readiness. Remember, each question is an opportunity to showcase your skills and fit for the role. If you found this information helpful, please like the video and subscribe for more content that can aid you in your job search journey. Good luck with your interview preparation.